Hell from seismic blasting off the wild coast will be successful. Judgment has been reserved in the Grahamstown High Court in Makanda in the case against Shell. Judge Gerald Bloom considered a second urgent interdict brought to stop the activity. We are now joined by Legal Resources Centre Attorney Vilmian Wickham and a Program Manager at Sustaining the Wild Coast, Sneku Kuzukulu. A very good afternoon to you too. Thank you so much for joining us and a warm welcome to The Full View. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Wilmian, uh, 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 Wilmian, rather, I'm going to start with you. The fact that Shell uh, won the court battle and is free to proceed with the, its seismic survey of the ocean off the wild coast, well, at least for now, surely this will not deter the environmentalists from pursuing this matter further until the demands are met. Yes, indeed. And, you know, Shell yesterday in court was at pains to say that there was a court case and that in, in that court case the judge found that they are allowed to continue uh, but, you know, our clients, Sinagugu and others, these are mostly small-scale uh, fishing communities from the wild coast. They're saying, well, we were not in that first court case. We have entirely different facts um, and indeed a different legal argument for stopping what Shell is doing. So we're very confident that the court will indeed this time stop Shell. Now, Snakuk, what's your understanding of the court's consideration in dismissing the interdict in the first place? I mean, taking into cognizance uh, the possible harm to the environment. Um, I think that's the question that you're supposed to give to, to the lawyers, uh, no, not to me. But, but what I, I can say is that in the, in, in the first uh, court case, um, there were the other applicants who were involved, who were aware when... Um, um, uh, um, uh, Shell or Impact Africa was was applying uh, to do the prospecting. We were as communities who are who are directly affected, who are dependent on the ocean for livelihood, for spirituality. We were not consulted, and we are saying by law, we ought to be uh, consulted as people who are directly um, affected by by what is being done in our ocean. And considering that another interdict was launched, uh, Vilmian, uh, what are the prospects of success, considering that an environmental authorization in terms of the National Environmental Management Act for the survey is required, and the government, as you know, is fully in support of the blasting? Yes, correct. Uh, Minister Mantashi made a late entry to, to the court case uh, just days before yesterday's argument. So, you know, what Sinaguga said now is very, very important. So the difference, I th one of the differences between the two court cases is that the first one was brought uh, by a number of organizations, but also recreational and commercial um, fishing entities, and they were all registered as interested in affected parties. They also say that the consultation process with them was completely defective. But these communities that went to court yesterday, they, they were never told. There was no effort made to consult with them whatsoever. And they say that means that Shell did not consider the impact on their livelihoods. Uh, and very importantly, Shell did not consider the impact on their spirituality and cultural life, which is intrinsically tied up um, with the ocean. The other big difference, I think, between the first and the second um, interdict, we'll have to see how it plays out, um, is this issue of irreparable harm. So Shell um, is adamant that if anyone, they've told the court now twice, that if anyone wants to stop them, they have to prove irreparable harm. So it's not for Shell to prove that they won't cause harm. It's for whoever wants to stop them to prove that, you know, if they're not stopped, there will be irreparable harm. And Shell says no one can prove that. Mm. Um, now, the applicants uh, in yesterday's case uh, did file quite a number of expert uh, affidavits from scientists saying that, well, they believe that there will be uh, certainly significant harm and in some cases irreparable harm. And so that question will now again have to be decided uh, by the judge. And I think uh, in this second interdict, there's a lot more information on the table. Well, what's your understanding then of the court's consideration in dismissing uh, the interdict? I mean, taking into consideration the possible harm to the environment? Yes. So, so in the first interdict um, application, the court... It was precisely on that point that the court said that there was just not enough evidence before them that uh, irreparable harm will be caused. 
Um, and that was that was very much uh, the point on which they didn't dismiss that interdict. Now, so as I say, in this second interdict, there's a lot more information on the table um, around harm. But I think very significantly what's on the table here is the fact that these are communities who were not consulted at all, at all, who only found out about this when, you know, protests started three weeks ago. And so Shell has never even considered the harm that they um, uh, may well cause to the cultural and spiritual uh, uh, um, identities yeah. and practices of these communities, let alone their livelihoods. Now, Shell says... Uh, they said yesterday in court that they can't be expected to um, consider um, and weigh up um, the the subjective spiritual beliefs of these communities, which I think our communities found truly uh, offensive and also a lack of understanding for the constitutional protection of all culture, religion, spirituality in South Africa. And so right. if it counts for some people's religion, it most certainly must count for the religion of the communities on this coast. Right. I mean, the jury is still out on whether the religious considerations will be made by Shell in this particular case. Now, Snekuku Shell says they spent millions of dollars preparing for this seismic survey. I mean, if the blasting does not go ahead as planned, they would have lost millions of dollars and essentially would be in contractual breach of an exploration right obtained years ago. Are you aware of these rights? Do you have access to that documentation? Um. You see, um, it, it shocks us as communities that and tell us about the billions they have spent. Yeah. Um, who has who has evaluated uh, the value of our dependence into the ocean? If Shell is talking about the billions that they have spent, but who has done an evaluation? Because had they done the EIA, maybe it's one of the studies that they would have done. They don't even know how many people are dependent, are using the, 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 or the ocean. How many Sangomas in our coastline are using the ocean for spirituality. Mm, How many mm. African independent churches are using the ocean for baptismal purposes? Mm. So for our government to always prioritize um, the, the, the economy and, uh, and, and, and their, their needs ahead of our livelihood, ahead of our culture, ahead of, of, our, of, of, our, of our belief. That is disregarding our constitutional rights, a right to, um, to a freedom of religion, a right to a sustainable at the, the development. So it, to us, it doesn't make sense because even if you are looking at globally in terms of international which of course we have not yet uh, tackled them on that at this at this time and age in the face of climate change for south africa which is the number one uh, carbon emitter in this continent to be considering exploring for oil to increase the emission which we are already the worst polluter in the, in, in in this continent is unthinkable mm, mm. So, Nekuk, unfortunately, we're losing so, you. Your line is not the best. Uh, well, unfortunately, your, your line is not the best, Snekuk. But, uh, Vilman, I'm going to come to you. I mean, uh, Shell seems to be considering the millions of dollars that they spend in preparation of this survey over the environmental impacts, over the environmental effects, and, of course, the violation of the social, cultural, religious rights of the community. Uh, I mean, they, they argue that uh, if they lose millions, this will is essentially be in contractual breach of an exploration right obtained years ago. Are you aware of this right? So we are aware that they that they that they received an exploration right. So so the the issue that was argued is that 
um, our clients are saying that in 2013, you could get an exploration right with an environmental management program, which is what, um, what Shell obtained. But the law changed shortly after that. And so today, if you cannot um, exercise an exploration right without an environmental impact assessment and, and, and that environmental authorization in terms of our environmental legislation, which is called NEMA. Um, now, so that, that is the dispute. There's no dispute to, to, about the fact that they did get a right in 2013. Um, there's also not a dispute that they can only exercise that right if they are also compliant under the environmental legislation. Shell is saying whatever they did under the mining legislation is entirely good enough. They don't have to go any further than that. They can exercise their right legally. And Minister Mantashi supported that argument in court. That's, that's, he showed up yesterday just to argue that. Our applicants say, no, that's a completely incorrect understanding of the law. Clearly, our law changed to make sure that exploration rights cannot be uh, exercised without environmental impact authorizations. And this is not, you know, a mere technical point, whether you had an EMPR or an EIA. Yes. There are very big differences between the two. And our clients are saying, had you done an EIA and had you complied with the environmental law uh, requirements, then you would certainly have known about these communities on, on the coast that you are impacting. Mm -hmm. And so that, for one, is a very important reason why you should be forced to do it. All right. Now, Snek Google Shell says this case is based on speculative harm, which is belied by the actual evidence and the experience of seismic surveys around the world. Whether they have, they have a point on this or not, I suppose, is a matter that falls within the ambit of the court's consideration. But ha, do you get a sense that a study has been conducted to assess the environmental impact of the surveys around the world, as claimed by Shell? The, the, the reason why we have brought in a number of experts of marine biologists was for that purpose, in order for us to be able to demonstrate beyond any reasonable doubt that this will cause harm. If you're looking at the evidence which has come in, even evidence that has come in from Namibia, which is where Shell has done the exploration, and the impact that the, the exploration had there in terms of of, of, of the, the fish that the, the people dependent or who are fishermen they were catching. So there is very clear evidence. If seismic waves exploration was so safe, it would not have been banned in other, in, 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 in other countries globally. So there is very clear evidence which we have put forward through those uh, the experts that we have invited to, to, to join us um, uh, through our affidavits in, 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 in this application. All right, um, Mr. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Vilmian, we come to thank you so much uh, for partaking in this discussion. We appreciate you both.